facility research, but we'd like to get our program started if we could. On behalf of the Clarence Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to welcome you all tonight. And this is our 15th System of the Year Dinner Award. Before I say anything else, why you're right here tonight is you've got a flash cube in your eyeballs. There's a young lady running around this room by the name of Molly who is taking photographs. And these photographs are put into an album for Barbara. And it's a pictorial event of the entire evening for her. So if she catches you in the middle of your salad or something, please smile and be appreciative. We started this a few years ago. We have dispensed with the reading of confirmations that are presented to our recipients. But we do recognize the people who have donated them. And we're running a little competition tonight with the Republican Party up the street. And some of them have been here and left. But I would still like to recognize them. Uh, we have a proclamation from Congressman Jack Hemp. We have one from our state senator, Walter J. Floss, who was here earlier and had to leave. We also have one from our state assemblyman, Bill Patson, who ate dinner with us and had to leave. However, we do have one from our county legislator, Rick Anderson. He is still here. We also have one from the town of Clarence and our supervisor, Irving Rinsbach. We also have some other dignitaries in the room tonight I'd just like to recognize. We have a table from the Chicawaga Chamber of Commerce, headed by Joe Donofrio. Joe, we also have a table here from the Amherst Chamber of Commerce. And at that table, we have Judge Ed Rath. We also have our Erie County Legislator, Mary Lou Rath.
At this time, I'd like to recognize the previous winners of the System of the Year Award. And this all started in 1972 with a guy by the name of Walter Smith. Walter? In 1973, they selected the real lady, Mrs. Lady Stern. In 1974, a man who was just inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame, Mr. Wilson Greatback. In 1975, a very strong support of the League of Women Voters, Mrs. Laura Cook. In 1976, Carmela Grabowski, I don't believe she's here at all. In 1977, Jim McMahon. 1978, Bob Smoka, Bob. 1979, Diane Baker. In 1980, this guy is the only guy I know his <laughs> wife still goes by her maiden name. <laughs> I can understand that though. <laughs> Harold Benson. Harold Burr. In 1981, Bob Ludwig. Bob. Charlotte Beard. Charlotte Beard. 1984, Mars Chase. Mars Chase. 
She's extremely energetic in the League of Women Voters. She is the editor of the election bulletin. And she was very active in getting a town prosecutor in this town. And is currently the local chairman of the League of Women Voters. And representing the League of Women Voters tonight, which is the organization which put Barbara's name in the nomination, this is Mary Grey Batchelor. Mary. Good evening, friends of Barbara Couts. Before I make some personal comments, I would like to read a paragraph from a letter that was sent from the State League of Women Voters and from the President, Marion Sinek, if you will bear with me a minute. She says, please extend our congratulations and best wishes at the community dinner on April 19th to both Barbara and the League for producing such fine leadership. We at the state level of the organization are proud of the achievements at the local league level through which we all learn, earn a reputation for excellence. Warmest regards, Marion Sinek. This is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> there are really few things that have given me, that have been as personally satisfying for me as being asked to say, say a few words about Barbara and why she was nominated for this award. It's really special for a couple of reasons. Perhaps the biggest reason is that Barb is a dear friend of mine, and to be able to share in this celebration in this way is truly exciting. And Barb, I thank you very much for asking me to do this. But this is also a celebration of volunteerism, because in order to qualify for this award, one must significantly significantly contribute to the life of the community in ways other than paid positions. I've long been an advocate for volunteerism and believe that this event deserves the continued strong support of the entire community. And for that, I thank the Chamber for doing this. Now, where do we go from here? Do you have any idea how difficult it is to come up with something unique and appropriate to say about a citizen of the year when you fear that it may be has, has been said 14 times before. My only hope is that you all have extremely bad memories <laughs> because I may repeat wonderful things other people have said. And I apologize if any of the remarks sound like cliches because Barbara Couch is anything but a cliche. I'm not going to tell you any jokes because I messed them up and I'm afraid you wouldn't laugh even if they were good. And I'm not going to tell you what Barb has done because I think most of you know that already. I'm not going to tell you why she did them because I think she's the only one that can do that. What I am going to tell you is how she did them and how well. I've chosen a few characteristics and qualities I believe summarize Barb's effectiveness and uniqueness. The first one is commitment, and in some ways includes all the other points. I'm talking about a front-to-back, beginning-to-end commitment, not one she walks away from when it gets boring or a little bit tough. There is real substance in her efforts, and follow-through that sees a task to its completion. Number two is tenacity. It contributes to point one, for it's the reason for the follow-through. This is what kept her from backing away from those tough issues, unless she was fully convinced, after a rational look at all the evidence, that it would not be a successful effort, or that it involved the energies of many other people with no promise of any success but she did not quit easily. Number three is initiative. With each new task outline that she was a part of, the work started at once. She doesn't wait to be told when to make the next phone call or where to look for the next resource. She is motivated by the desire for effectiveness 
to set into action a plan that indeed gets the job done. Number four, four, and I think you all agree, is enthusiasm. I don't think I need to say anything more because I'm not sure I've ever seen her when she wasn't enthusiastic. Number five is intensity. Now unfortunately, this is a word that is often given negative meaning. Definitely not so in this case. I'm talking about intensity in effort and expectation. I've already mentioned effort, but she expected the same high level of performance from other people she worked with as she did from herself. As an effective leader, she expected people to work to her standard. And this is a quality that's too often lacking in volunteer work. Number six is a word that comes to mind that describes what Barb is not, and that is superficial. She didn't join an organization, agree to serve on a committee, or take a cause because it was an easy addition to her portfolio. She doesn't agree to a task or even seek tasks because they are ladylike, proper, or even popular. In fact, some of them have been socially and politically unpopular. How many people do you know that really get excited when you talk about solid waste, wastewater, and aluminum cans? Not very many. But she has conscientiously looked for things that needed to be done, whether it was a church, through the league, or in a variety of community opportunities. Number seven, and a quality that I respect immensely, is professionalism. Barb worked as hard and was as thorough and effective as though she had received a good salary for her work. I promise to be brief. I did promise you that. I promised several other people that. So to, to summarize my comments in one sentence, might be to say that Barb fulfilled her commitments with integrity. Short speeches are not easy, and there is certainly a lot more that I could say, but these are perhaps a few of the things the League of Women Voters saw, and certainly I saw, as reasons to nominate Barb for this year's Citizen of the Year. instructor in the off season. He taught me how to ski last year and after I ripped the tendons in my right leg I wound up being carried halfway down the hill at Kissing Bridge. He's a great guy. <laughs> to present the Clarence Chamber silver plate, the Clarence Chamber president, Mr. Tom Tepp. Thomas. Really, Dave has been the chairman of this dinner for the last couple of years. He sweat bullets and everything else. I think he deserves a real, a real round of applause. Whenever I call him on the phone, I call him John Clark Hill. One other thank you that uh, before we present the award uh, is that Sears. This is the 15th year. Sears has presented the, uh, or made, donated the, the silver platter for the award, and I, I think Sears deserves also a round of applause. Uh, about not quite 14 years ago, uh, I was transferred into uh, the western area and uh, began to look around for a, a place to live, and I I looked at, you know, looked at many communities and determined that Clarence was the place that I wanted to bring my family to. And it's people like Barb and the other past recipients that uh, made me decide that I wanted to settle in Clarence. And uh, I'm knowing Barb for many years, she's a very deserving recipient. And I, at this time, would like to present her with the Clarence Citizen of the Year.
you all so very much. And after hearing Mary speak, now you know why I asked her to speak in my behalf and to represent the League of Women Voters tonight. It was, it was just great, and Mary, I certainly thank you very much. Well, Mary really offered me a challenge because over the past years, the Clarence B has done a good job of telling you what I did to qualify for this honor tonight. In fact, a lot of the stories I wrote myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I know the truth. And now Mary has told you how I did it. And I certainly appreciate those comments. So I guess I'll have to tell you why. There's a humorous old song with the chorus, it's a good job for somebody, somebody else, not me. But that's not a good song for a professional volunteer like me, unless the words could be changed to, it's a good job for somebody, why not me? Indeed, why not? And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Why volunteers do what we do. Because volunteers offer our services of our own free will, we are able to do the jobs that others have neither the time nor the desire to do. Jobs that we feel are vital to the life of a civilized community. We choose to freely give whatever time and money we feel are necessary to accomplish our goals. I guess you could say we're in business for ourselves. And all of you business people here tonight know that such responsibilities freely taken are impossible to put down, no matter how difficult they may become until the job is done. So why do we work long hours for no pay? One reason is the inspiration from those who have gone before us, who have set the standard. For me, it was the League of Women Voters. They gave me the opportunity to learn how to be an effective volunteer. Their appreciation and praise of my work encouraged me to take on greater responsibilities, to grow in knowledge and in confidence. <coughs> Members of the League, I want to thank you all for these challenging experiences because you made tonight possible. Thank you all. <laughs> Another reason why volunteers keep on working is because we meet a lot of good companions along the way. Because I certainly didn't accomplish all of my goals alone. You people here all helped on one project or another when the going got rough. And you didn't get paid either. When you stood in the freezing cold, sorting through aluminum cans that smelled the high heaven of stale beer. Harold. <laughs> or wrote addresses on hundreds of wastewater committee letters by hand because the town computer was inoperable that year. Or gave the money so that the aluminum recycling project could be shown on cable TV. But all the inspiration and companionship isn't enough without the wholehearted support from the volunteer's family who lives with them through the high times and the disappointments. I want to thank my family for putting up with their professional volunteer, especially my husband, Hank, who has been my strength and emotional support, always urging me to focus on the value and importance of my work. And finally, thanks to you, the members of the Clarence Chamber of Commerce, for in honoring me tonight, you are really honoring all the volunteers of Clarence. People who freely give their time to make things just a little bit better for everyone else. 
You have given us all an esteemed position in the eyes of the community. When Dave Folger came to tell me that the Chamber had chosen me as a 1986 Citizen of the Year, I was profoundly honored and, after recovering my wits, terribly excited about joining this most prestigious club. The 14 who preceded me all had an impact on my life. And it is my sincere wish tonight that our volunteer work will continue to inspire other Citizens of the Year who in the future will stand here to be recognized for their as yet unknown contributions to our town. Thank you. sitting on a chair that has an orange sticker in the front right leg. You now own a centerpiece at your table. That, that's where my wife told me she put them, right? Just the front right leg. Yeah. 